According to the International Labour Organization, India employs 47 lakh domestic workers, but the true numbers are somewhere between 2 to 8 crores. It is assumed that 70% of domestic workers are women. The All India Central Council of the Trade Union states that domestic workers face triple oppression out of caste, class and gender. Indian households have had quite a long history of employing domestic workers, a vast majority of whom are Dalits. The increasing migration away from rural areas has resulted in growing number of Adivasi women joining this workforce. Domestic workers are subject to discriminatory, feudal and casteist practices that have persisted over time. These include, but are not limited to, the provision of separate plates, tumblers, prohibition of entry into the puja room, denial of access to toilets, seating facilities and other forms of humiliation that have been so ingrained that most of them neither complain nor realize that they are oppressed. So what does the Indian government do for them? It was not until 2008 that domestic work was recognized and even then it was given the informal work status. Why so? Because under the labor code, if they were to be recognized as formal workers, they would then need to be given the minimum wage, health benefits which include maternal and paternal leaves, designated work hours and bounds to what their work truly is. So, what is domestic work? Is it cooking, sweeping, caring for children, plumbing, cleaning washrooms and dusting? Or does it go beyond that? This is exactly where the loopholes and contentions lie. The International Labour Organization Convention C189 recognizes that the domestic work is undervalued, invisible and particularly vulnerable to discrimination in respect of conditions of employment and of work and to other abuses of human rights and provides for minimum conditions to ensure decent work for domestic workers. India has signed the convention but has not ratified it yet, despite several demands. During the COVID-19 pandemic, a survey conducted by the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship reported that nearly 85% of domestic workers were not paid during the lockdown period. However, this did not account for workers who lost their jobs or were asked not to come owing to the spread of the virus. Economic distress, lack of savings, lack of employment security and little to no social protection. So what is the government doing? Well, for instance, the Karnataka government asked workers to apply through a 17-step online application process for a meager amount of rupees 2000. The central government has been busy pushing in laws that exclude domestic workers from protection, such as the Occupational Health and Safety Code, which specifically excludes domestic work from its ambit. The wage of domestic workers in Bangalore range from rupees 2000 to rupees 13000. However, the minimum wage in Karnataka ranges from rupees 12241 to rupees 14711. Which implies that a domestic worker needs to work 4 to 6 households to fetch even the minimum wage let alone inflation and rising costs of living in the city. Paid domestic work continues to be excluded from the central list of scheduled employments under the Minimum Wages Act of 1948. It is not covered under the Payment of Wages Act 1936 or the Workmen's Compensation Act 1923 or the Contract Labour Regulation and Abolition Act 1970 
or the Maternity Benefit Act 1961. The other two central government interventions in recent times, bringing domestic workers under the Unorganized Workers Social Security Act 2008, Domestic Workers Welfare and Social Security Act 2010. and the sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention prohibition and redressal act 2013 look good on paper but inspire little hope of making a difference in the real world in the absence of mechanisms for inspection and enforcement and not surprisingly they haven't in 2020 the indian parliament amended and consolidated old labor laws and passed the code on social security with an aim to extend benefits like insurance a retirement fund and maternity assistance to laborers in some formal arrangements but it has done not much for domestic workers because individual households are not recognized as workplaces ಹೆಸರು ಕಶ್ಮೀರ್ ಹಾಂ ನೀವು ಏನೇನು ಕೆಲಸ 
ऐसा मन के रहा Okay, can I know if you employed any domestic help in your house, maybe in your PG or at home? No, uh, like not personally, but yeah, in our PG there are domestic. No, I have not. No, no. Oh no. uh, yeah, you we do. Okay, at least. Yes. All right. Mm, yes, exactly. Yeah. We have around three to four people. Like where? Like um, that's domestic work. Yes. Yeah, there is. In your home or like home or PG or? I mean, uh, one of them is in my home and uh, one of them is in my apartment. Okay. Uh, yeah, at my home we do have house help. Similarly, for my PG, we do have people who help us out. So, uh, what's the first thing which uh, comes to your mind when we say the word domestic work? basically a domestic worker whatever uh, you know house help or any sort of cleaning or you know like cleaning up our 
basically a whatever you know like basic needs you know like being hygiene that's it the first thing is they're not paid properly first thing like how much we respect them we see their level what level they are like they don't get respect what they deserve yeah basically they they are not getting paid properly okay. help and then somebody who's helping us yeah. The household jobs. Uh, usually, a cook or something that you ask for help around the house or cleaning or something. Uh, the thing is, my like my parents have always been working, so we've always had house help. So when you say domestic worker, I just picture it's mostly the picture of a woman. Oh, when you say domestic worker, it usually means like a housemaid. Or a person who helps around the house when, like, you know, because as a child I've always had people helping around the house because I've had both my parents working, so uh, I've always like, you know, uh, for me in my mind it's always like people who help around the house and like who help my mother in cooking or like stuff like that. Okay. So, uh, do you guys don't know any rights that we need to give to the domestic uh, uh, workers or? Do you know any existing existing rights for domestic workers? Mm, not exactly what rights, but, but there are acts. But there are acts. Maybe they are not aware of. Maybe they, it's not practiced. In our city, yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm aware of the right that they have a certain uh, set amount of salary that needs to be paid and a set amount of hours that they can work, and uh, they can also they also have amount of leaves that they can have or the amount of holidays that they can take. That's the amount. I'm pretty sure there's more, but. That's the model. No. Basically, domestic workers do not have any permanent rights or anything which is sought in by the government, or there is no support from them. But uh, there are certain, uh, you know, like uh, uh, programs with the government actually put up to people who are doing domestic work and works which are not permanently situated. So there are a few, but I can't name them. I know a few. Yeah, if I'm not wrong, there's a domestic workers right. I think it's in, in some twenty section, uh, and also there's that right against exploitation uh, of labour. So yeah, I think that uh, those are the two that are applicable. No, not really. So just one, which is child labour. So I mean, I mean now there's been a lot of thing about child labour. Don't put any, don't employ anybody who's under eighteen and all that. Minus that, nothing. Uh, it all all the rights as per human they are applicable. They 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 are having the rights to have all the things what general human should have. Apart from that, I am not aware of very much rights what they have. All right, thank you so much, sir. Uh, hi, my name is Himanshu Singh, and I've been a part of various legal firms across the country. in civil and session courts as well as corporate firms talking about the 2020 labor codes that is a consolidation of various laws and now it has the social security laws the occupational hazard laws and so many other laws but the question was that what does it do or does it encompass the concept of domestic workers so prior to this amendment the laws were not consolidated but diversified segregated and they had their own rigid definitions and own rigid interpretations that were happening so under the 2020 code there there are certain changes when it comes to the protection and rights that have been provided to the domestic worker major challenges is that this domestic worker sector is considered quite informal because these are not part of the formal workforce these are not part of industry establishment factories these are not part of the formal employment industry as i must put it i should not call it industry as industry has a specific definition under, under the labor code but if i have to talk about the group <clears throat> domestic workers are most of the time segregated from it. it might be due to the nature of their work it might be the way the rights and the awareness have been spread along the public the code do not 
directly address the issue of child domestic work so that is actually one of the major lacunas that i found under the act so as long as domestic workers are guaranteed certain rights even though they were not specified child domestic workers are just out of the ambit of the act so there are certain lacunas and one of the major reasons is because we find this field informal but under the new relation code i think we'll be able to get to some under the 2020 code we have actually grievance redressal mechanism in the form of authorities that are designated by the government and these do not just relate to wages it also relates to the violation of the rights the working condition and one of the most controversial not controversial i won't say it controversial because it's true one of the most testing fields of domestic workforce that is the harassment that takes place as people who work in field of hr or who have dealt with this issue of harassment at workplace might know of the mishakha guidelines that uh, came out in 2013 this is a public service announcement domestic workers in india are a part of many households but are they given their rights do we think about them they work so hard to make our lives easier but do they have their own basic rights no they don't they often have to work for long hours they not even paid their basic wages and denied basic rights like medical insurance or paid leaves despite acts like domestic workers welfare and social security acts in india domestic workers are still not being provided with their basic rights it is high time to demand for their justice it is high time to demand for their rights it is high time that we provide them with the dignity and the respect that they deserve to do so we have started a certain campaign sign the petition which has alternative alternative policies that come up for the rights of domestic workers this will help support our cause this will help make a change let's come together and step up let's come together and make a change